Hi there, welcome to the fourth lesson in this series on physical and chemical change. In this lesson we focus on energy changes that take place when substances dissolve in water. At the end of this lesson you will be able to use observed signs of energy transfer to classify a change as either exothermic or endothermic. Explain at a microscopic level why a given change is exo or endothermic. We'll start this lesson with a quick visit to a soccer match. Hey, looks like something happened. Let's go and find out. Right, we've just broke this ice pack. It's on your knee now. It's going cold as you can feel. Um, it's just to help with the pain and the swelling and the bleeding, etc. Should there be any bleeding? All right. Okay, how's it feeling? Oh, it's much better. Good. And excuse me, what, what's in the pack? That you put around All right, and this is an instant ice pack. It's um, got ammonium nitrate as well as water inside. You just squeeze the packet, the water breaks, and then there's a chemical reaction which gives off cold, and then that's it. And all you do is slap it on, and less messy than uh, normal ice, it doesn't melt, and you can keep it on the shelf for long. Wow, that's amazing. Good stuff, yeah, very good stuff. I found out that a cold pack contains a solid called ammonium nitrate and a separate area containing water. When a player is injured, the paramedic just punches the cold pack. This breaks the seal dividing the water and the ammonium nitrate. The water and the ammonium nitrate then mix and the pack gets cold. I also discovered that you get hot packs in first aid kits too. They contain calcium chloride in water. I would love to find out more about the science that makes these packs work, wouldn't you? Well, John is in the lab with some experiments ready to show us what is happening. Let's join him. Hi there. For this experiment, all we'll need is some water, some calcium chloride and some ammonium nitrate. We'll add these to test tubes containing water to see if they really get hot and cold just like the instant hot packs and cold packs do when the seal inside them is broken. But before we do some experiments, make sure that we've got a table ready to record our observations. Here's mine, compare it to yours. First I'll add some calcium chloride to this test tube and stir it. The solid seems to disappear. It dissolves in the water. This must be what happens when the calcium chloride and the water in the hot packs mix. Oops, it's getting hot. Now I'll add some more calcium chloride to this test tube. Now it's even hotter than before. The more calcium chloride I added to the solution, the hotter it became. Now watch what happens when I mix ammonium nitrate and some water. The ammonium nitrate has all dissolved and the test tube is getting colder. I'm going to record my observations. The calcium chloride dissolved in water and it became hot. While the ammonium nitrate also dissolved in water but it got cold. Back to you Diasha. Thanks John. Now both calcium chloride and ammonium nitrate are ionic salts. We learnt in lesson 3 that when we add ionic salts to water, the water breaks up the ionic crystals into tiny charged particles called, that's right, ions. Why don't you try to write down the equations to represent the two reactions that we just saw. CaCl2 brackets S plus H2O brackets L react to form Ca2 plus brackets Aq plus 2Cl minus brackets Aq. NH4Cl brackets S 
plus H2O brackets L react to form NH4 plus brackets AQ plus Cl minus brackets AQ. Did you come up with the correct equations? Well done if you did. Remember, in chemistry, you must always be able to accurately represent what you see in a chemical equation. So this is an important skill for you to practice. These equations tell us that all of the solid substances we add to the water reacted with the water. That's why we can't see the solids anymore. They dissolve. But only a small proportion of the water molecules reacted to break down the salt. Most of the water molecules are not involved in the reaction. When calcium chloride reacts with water, energy is transferred out of the reacting solid into the water molecules around them. This transfer of energy increases the temperature of the solution. The hot solution makes the test tube hot. The test tube makes the air around it hot. And if the test tube was an instant hot pack, it could make sore muscles hot too. We call changes that transfer energy into the surroundings exothermic changes. Increase in temperature or the presence of a flame are two signs that tell us that a reaction is exothermic. The prefix exo means outside. Energy is transferred out of reactant molecules during exothermic reactions. We can represent this energy change on an energy axis. This horizontal line represents the energy of the water and the solid calcium chloride, the reactants before we mix them. When we mix the two substances, energy is transferred out of the reacting molecules. So the energy of the products, the hydrated calcium and chloride ions, must be lower on the energy axis. But energy is conserved. This means that the total quantity of energy of all of the molecules stays the same. When reactants change into products, the way the energy is shared by the molecules changes, not the quantity of energy. The energy that the reactants lose when they form hydrated ions is transferred to the surrounding molecules in the solution, and so the temperature of the solution increases. The arrow on the diagram represents the quantity of energy. The energy of the reactants equals the energy of the products plus the energy transferred to the solution. We call this change in energy of the reactants when they form products, the enthalpy change for this reaction, and represent it with the symbol delta H. In science, we use the Greek letter delta to mean a change in or the difference between. We give a sign, a plus or a minus, to an enthalpy change to show whether the energy of the reacting molecules increases or decreases during the reaction. Chemists give delta H a negative value for an exothermic reaction. This makes sense because reactant molecules lose energy when they form product molecules. But when ammonium nitrate reacts with water, the solution cools. This must mean that energy is transferred into the reacting molecules to increase their energy. The energy gained by the reacting molecules comes from molecules surrounding the reacting molecules. This transfer of energy out of the solution into the reacting molecules decreases the temperature of the solution. We call changes that transfer energy out of the surroundings endothermic reactions. The prefix endo means inside. Temperature decrease is a sign that tells us that a reaction is endothermic. Energy is transferred into reacting molecules during endothermic reactions. Let's represent this energy change on our energy axis too. This line represents the energy of the water and the ammonium nitrate before we mix them. When we mix the two substances, energy is transferred out of the molecules around the reacting molecules into the reacting molecules. So the energy of the products, the hydrated ammonium and nitrate ions, must be at a higher level on the energy axis. Again, energy is conserved. 
the energy gained by the reactant molecules when they form hydrated ions is equal to the energy lost by the surroundings. Chemists give delta H a positive value for an endothermic reaction. Again, this makes sense since reactant molecules gain energy when they form product molecules. So, how is it possible that dissolving in water is in one case exothermic and in the other endothermic? The answer must involve the relative quantities of energy involved in bond breaking and bond formation during the dissolving reactions. Do you remember that energy is transferred into molecules to break bonds? So, bond breaking is endothermic. You should also remember that energy is transferred out of molecules when new bonds form. So, making bonds is exothermic. Now, scientists have measured the quantity of energy transferred to make and to break bonds between different kinds of atoms or molecules. It may help us to use some of these measured values instead of talking in general terms. Scientists tell us that it takes about 2,240 kilojoules of energy to break the ionic bonds holding calcium and chlorine in a given mass of the ionic salt. So the calcium ions and the chloride ions have about 2,240 kilojoules more energy than a calcium chloride lattice. But more energy, in fact, about 2,380 kilojoules, is transferred out of these ions when they form bonds with water molecules. So overall, more energy is transferred into the surroundings than is transferred into the reacting molecules. This 140 kilojoule increases the temperature of the solution. This next graph represents the energy changes when a certain mass of ammonium nitrate dissolves in water in an instant ice pack. Look at it carefully. Arrow 1 represents the energy transferred into the lattice of ammonium nitrate to break the bonds, forming separated ammonium and nitrate ions. This is an endothermic change. Bonds form when these ions become surrounded by a sheath of water molecules. Arrow 2 represents the energy in this exothermic process. But the important part about the dissolving of ammonium nitrate in water is that less energy is transferred out when new bonds form than is transferred in to break bonds. So at the end of the process, the products have higher energy than the reactants. Arrow 3 represents the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. The measured delta H value for this is about plus 27 kilojoules. Arrow 3 represents the quantity of energy that is taken out of the surroundings which become cooler as a result. So, ammonium nitrate is the perfect substance to use in an instant ice pack. Before I summarize all that we have discovered today, there's one last point that I want you to take note of. When John did the experiments, he used the same amounts of calcium chloride and ammonium nitrate in his solutions. But we just saw that when calcium chloride reacted with water, 140 kilojoules are transferred out of the reactants. And when ammonium nitrate reacted with the water, only 27 kilojoules was transferred into the reactants. So for equal amounts, dissolving calcium chloride is more exothermic than dissolving ammonium nitrate is endothermic. Now to summarize, both the changes we have observed form new substances, so the dissolving in water of calcium chloride and ammonium nitrate are both chemical changes. One of these chemical changes is exothermic, the other chemical change is endothermic. Do you think that one could also find exo and endothermic physical changes? When an exhausted athlete sweats, Water on her skin undergoes the following physical change. H2O brackets L becomes H2O brackets G. A. Are bonds broken or formed during this change? B. Is this an exo or an endothermic change? Butter melts in the sun. Is this physical change exothermic or endothermic? Explain. I really hope that you have enjoyed today's lesson. Bye for now. Bye.